What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I'm going to be giving you a crash course in synthesizers and sound design. I'll be covering types of synthesis, waveforms, ADSR, filters, unison, wavetables, effects, and how to make basic sounds, and then I'll give you some free and paid resources to further your sound design journey. Sound design can be pretty daunting when you're first starting out, so I'm going to break it down as best I can. And to do this, I'm going to be using x for Records Serum, and a lot of the stuff I'm going to be showing can be done in pretty much any synth plugin out there. I just like Serum for its interface and the visual feedback that it gives you. There are multiple different kinds of synthesis, and these can achieve various different kinds of sounds. So here they are in order of difficulty. Subtractive, Wavetable, FM, and Additive. Today I'm going to be focusing on subtractive synthesis and a bit of wavetable synthesis, which in a lot of ways is kind of like a really advanced version of subtractive synthesis. These are both extremely versatile methods of sound design and need to be understood before you jump into anything more complicated. The basic idea behind subtractive synthesis is to take an existing basic sound and then chip away at it using filters and effects to get the sound you're going for. Think of it like a sculptor chipping away at a hunk of marble. Subtractive synthesis uses a few standard waveforms. A waveform is the shape of a sound wave, and we have a few to choose from. A sine wave, a square wave, a triangle wave, and a sawtooth wave. There are others as well, but these are the most common. These are our basic hunks of marble that we can start hacking away at to get sounds. The sine wave is a very clean, simple tone, so it's often used to make sub basses. And you can also get 808-like sounds from messing with the pitch and distorting it. The square wave is known for having a very hollow sound, and it's used a lot in chiptune. And a similar kind of waveform is also used in Terror Squad, Zomboy style dubstep, but I'll get to that later. The sawtooth wave is probably the most common waveform used in electronic music. It's this dense, complex sound, and as such, is very versatile. And you'll hear it in everything from plucks to leads to big chord stacks to basses and arps. And I'll go over how a sawtooth wave can be turned into all of these things in just a second. In a synthesizer, all of these waveforms are generated by oscillators. And the reason they're called oscillators is because sound is vibration. Think of plucking a guitar string that has to move back and forth or oscillate to create that sound. And this goes for any sound, which is why waveform generators are called oscillators. Now that we have our basic sounds, we can start to shape them. And the first way we are going to shape them is with envelopes, which are controlled by ADSR. ADSR stands for Attack, Sustain, Decay, Release. Attack is the start of a sound. A sound with a short attack starts right away. And a sound with a long attack comes in slowly. Decay controls what happens immediately after the sound starts. So for example, maybe the sound immediately dips down in volume after the attack, creating a sharp sound. Sustain controls what happens when you hold down a note for a while. Release is what happens when the note is let go. So a sound with a short release will stop abruptly. And a sound with a long release will ring out for a while. Envelopes are great for controlling what our sound does over time like this. But they're also great for controlling our next sound shaping tool, filters. I'm going to assume that you understand what EQ is and the basics of how it works. And a filter is really nothing more than an EQ, but it's used very differently from your standard EQ. Your filter types include a high cut filter, also known as a low pass filter because it allows the lows to pass through, a low cut filter, a notch filter, and a band pass filter. There are others as well with increasingly crazy shapes, but I'm going to focus on these for now. Where these filters really become useful in shaping a sound is when they start moving. For instance, let's take this sawtooth wave here. Now I'm going to add a high cut and make its effect more and more extreme over time. And that's how we get our basic pluck sound. If I go the other way, you get future bass or 2011 dubstep. 
Where the filter sits in the frequency spectrum is called the cutoff. Automating the cutoff using an envelope is what gives you the plucks and wubs that I just showed you. You can also have the cutoff move slowly and quickly at the same time. So for instance, let's take the pluck sound I had earlier. So if I want to make a pluck that opens up over time, I would slowly automate the cutoff to move over time up the frequency spectrum. In addition to cutoff, we have resonance. And resonance is a boost right at the edge of the cutoff. A classic application of that is an acid bass. Unison is what will make your sounds dense and wide. Listen to what happens when I take a sawtooth wave and crank up the unison. Imagine this like a choir, because in a choir, you have a bunch of people who all have slightly different tonalities to their voices, all singing the same note at once, for instance. And all of those differences add up to make this one note that has this very complex, dense, rich sound to it. And unison basically does the same thing, but with the waveform. I can also control things like how loud the other voices are or how spread out they are, making a sound more or less complex or more or less wide. The sound I just made, by the way, is called a super saw. And a super saw is a really important sound in electronic music. It can be used for big chord stacks, leads, and plucks. If I wanted to turn this into a lead, I would make it so you can only play one note at a time, and then I would increase the glide a bit, which basically means it takes a little more time to get from one note to another. If I wanted to turn this into a pluck, I'd add a high cut filter that goes down really fast and increase the release time on the overall sound. If I wanted to turn this into a pad, I would increase both the attack and the release time, maybe cut the highs a bit and add a bit of reverb. And speaking of reverb, effects are another tool at our disposal to shape our sound. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time on them here, because if you're into production, I can assume that you're at least somewhat familiar with some of the basic effects that you're going to be using. And these include reverb, delay, distortion, flangers, phasers, and dimension expanders. One suggestion I've heard for people starting out learning sound design is to take a bunch of waveforms and apply a bunch of filters and a bunch of effects and mix and match a bunch of stuff so that way you'll know what a bunch of stuff sounds like all in combination. So maybe the next time you hear a gritty bass in a song, you'll know, hey, that's a uh, sawtooth wave with a little bit of unison, distortion, and some sort of filter on it. If you want to be guided through this process and skip some of the trial and error associated with it, I would recommend checking out Centorial. And I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but Centorial gives you a really intuitive, hands-on approach to learning synthesis. And I'll link it down in the description if you're interested. It does cost a bit of money, but it is well worth it. Wavetable synthesis is a step beyond subtractive synthesis, and it's how synths like Massive and Serum work. A wavetable is a bunch of waveforms all crammed in into one oscillator, and you can morph between waveforms. Wavetables often have much more complicated waveforms, which can make for weirder or more aggressive sounds. We can also make a pretty good growl by taking an aggressive wavetable, layering in a sine wave an octave lower for a sub, adding a low cut filter, and then making the pitch go up an octave and then down an octave. As you can hear, a sound comes both from the waveform that you're using and the processing that's applied to it. And Serum actually lets you make your own wavetables, which is really nice. You just drag in your own sound, and then you can manipulate it in a variety of ways, which is why Serum is currently, at the time I'm recording this, the most popular synth for bass music. And you can further tweak waveforms with warp modes, such as plus or minus. If you want an in-depth education on wavetable synthesis and specifically Serum, check out the Virtual Riot video that is in the playlist that is linked in the description below. By now, you should have a better understanding of sound design and know what you need to learn in order to get 
better at it. But I do have some additional resources that I want to recommend. The first thing is the playlist that I keep mentioning. I compiled this playlist full of sound design tutorials that go much more in depth on the topics that I mentioned and try to arrange them in some sort of logical order. And they also go deeper into stuff that I didn't really get to, like they go deeper into wavetable synthesis and FM synthesis. The paid resource that I recommend is Centorial. And finally, if you really want to hone your sound design chops quickly, one thing that I really recommend you do is reverse engineer presets. So take a preset that you like, take a screenshot of it, and then initialize everything. Then methodically go through twisting knobs and adjusting settings to match what you see in the picture. And most importantly, listening to what each change does. That way, you'll know what different changes do to shape the sound, and you'll be able to much more quickly get to the sound that you have in your head. All right, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video and found it helpful, I'd love to have you hit that like button and subscribe. You can check out the previous episodes of Music Production Crash Course right here, or you can watch the playlist that I mentioned and go further down the sound design rabbit hole right here. <laughs>